Hi everybody, Rob here again from Power Learning Solutions with some tips and strategies for ed tech students who have been asked to evaluate an educational technology tool as an assignment. Uh, keeping in mind that these tips and tricks will also work for anybody who wants to evaluate an ed tech tool uh, for use in their own classroom, you just won't have the assignment submission component as part of it. So. As an example, I have a group of students right now who I have asked to submit an EdTech tool evaluation. It's just a thousand word review. Uh, here's a look at the assignment description for them. They've been asked to write an EdTech tool evaluation, picking a tool, uh, finding a rubric to evaluate that tool, and writing up their thousand word evaluation. So what are the steps to this process? Well, the first step you need to do is figure out what tool you want to review and why you want to review it. So for our example, I'm going to look at, uh, at Pear Deck, which is a popular tool used in the K-12 system. All right, that's settled down. I know what tool I want to review, Pear Deck. My next question is, how am I going to review that tool? I could just look at it uh, from my own experience and, and write up some of my thoughts on it, but even for those of us who have a lot of experience using EdTech tools in the classroom, if you do this, you're bound to miss something. So what we want to do is choose some kind of rubric or scoring card that we can use to systematically evaluate that tool. Now, if we look at the example of this assignment here for my group of students, um, I've provided some links here to a couple of resources where you can find existing rubrics that you can, as the instructions say, adopt or adapt to evaluate your tool. I'm going to look at this one here, the rubric for evaluating e-learning tools in higher education by Anstey and Watson, 2018. Their blog posts, they go into a detailed description of why they created the rubric and what it actually evaluates and lots of good criteria on here. And there's a link to a downloadable copy of the rubric right near the top of the page. There's another link at the bottom of the page. If you click on this, it is going to open up the rubric for you. It's a downloadable PDF that you can use to score your tool. So I have an example of this PDF already downloaded here, and I am going to uh, open that up. So I want to look at Pear Deck. I want to score it according to these criteria. Now, I'm not going to actually score it right now. We don't have uh, the time in this video to go through that process in detail, but I'm going to look at each of these questions here for functionality, uh, scale, ease of use, tech support, availability. Well, maybe this tool works well, so uh, uh, going to scale, so I can select it as this. Maybe ease of use. I have some minor concerns about ease of use. Uh, there's not much tech support uh, available for it. Well, maybe there is, maybe there isn't. But for hypothetical sake, let's say that it doesn't. So I scored uh, at this on the rubric. I can mark up this, uh, this rubric here in Adobe. I can print it off. I can uh, mark it up and score everything on there. And I can come up with a systematic rating for how fit this particular tool, Pear Deck in our example, is for my purposes in my context as a teacher. All right, what do I do once I've scored it? Well, you're gonna write up your assignment uh, and you're going to explain how you scored it and what that all means. So I have a sample paper here that I have started, a systematic review of Pear Deck as a classroom en engagement tool. Uh, I'm using APA formatting here, which would be the, uh, the formatting required for my particular students. Your formatting might be different depending on the course or, uh, that you're taking or the organization that you're going to submit this review to as some kind of a briefing note or update for them. First thing I'm going to do is do an introduction like you would with any paper. I've got a little introduction here that explains what tool I have chosen and why I've chosen it. I've chosen it basically because it is an increasingly popular tool used in uh, primary elementary grades or sometimes junior or senior high as well for reviewing key concepts, for increasing engagement as uh, students study, and for even gathering some formative feedback. So 
I've got a justification as to why I want to review this tool. The next thing I'm going to do is give a brief overview of what the tool is that I am reviewing. So I've got a little bit of an overview of what Pear Deck here is here. I've got a quote from another source, which should be block indented, by the way, not just uh, justified to the left here. Uh, and then anything else I want to say about it. So I have just some placeholder text here for demo purposes. Once I have told you what tool I have chosen, why I've chosen it, uh, chosen it and what uh, the tool actually is, I'm going to tell you about how I review the tool. This is my methodology section. So I'm going to tell you about the rubric that I chose, the rubric for e-learning tool evaluation by Anstey and Watson. I give a brief overview of the tool. I tell you that I use the tool to uh, score a uh, pair deck on each of the categories and that I'm going to present the results of that scoring in Appendix A. I don't need to put the entire rubric right here in the paper. Uh, I'll put that in the appendix, which comes after my references list. All right, so the next part of this, what were the results? What did I find? The key findings of my systematic analysis of Pear Deck were, you outline what you found. You can organize this however you want. You can talk about it just in paragraph format. You can put in subheadings here for each of the categories. What were your key findings? What were the concerns? You are going to follow that up with a discussion and some recommendations. So in your context, if you are a, an elementary school teacher, what do these findings tell you about using that tool? What do you recommend for other teachers in your context if they're considering to use that tool? And then a short paragraph or two to wrap things up under your conclusions, basically circling back uh, to say, I evaluated Pear Deck because, and uh, I found that it met these requirements and that there, that there are some concerns and some key recommendations for any teachers who want to use it. After that, you put in your references. For this type of review, you're going to need to include both your academic references and your tool references. I've got two academic references here. They're not peer-reviewed journals. Both of these are uh, websites and blog posts, but I cited them in the paper. Anstey and Watson's rubric. I cited Edwards in here telling me about what Pear Deck was. And don't forget to include a citation for the tool you're reviewing as well. Even if it's a popular tool, it is still intellectual property. We still need to include a proper citation for that tool. And now I need to add my appendix on here, which was uh, this rubric. So I'm going to actually add that into this document. If you have the full Adobe suite like me, you can easily add it in by organizing, uh, going to organizing your pages. And uh, that would be uh, one of these tools over here. They've just updated Adobe on me. Uh, or you could submit it as a second file. Just call it Appendix 1. Make sure that your name is part of the file name and uh, you've got your paper written. You've got your rubric, which you use to score everything as an appendix, either as one single document or as two documents. Now you've got a detailed review that uh, explains what the tool is you were looking at, how you reviewed it, what the results of your review were, and what recommendations you have for any other teachers who uh, might be considering using that tool. Now to clear up one last bit of confusion for my students or students in any uh, other instructor's course, who are doing this kind of an assignment. We're going to come back to the assignment instructions here. You will see that in my case, I have an evaluation rubric added to the assignment instructions. That is not the rubric you would use to evaluate your tool. That is the rubric that I will use to evaluate the assignment once you submit it.